Hello there World of Tankers, I'm Jordal's Blitz, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the WZ Blaze. This is the Tier 7 Chinese Tank Destroyer that's going to be coming into the game in an event to hopefully earn for free very, very soon, and maybe even tomorrow at soonest. So in today's video, I'm going to be telling you a little bit about the tank, the statistics, how to play it, with, of course, some live gameplay. Sadly, I don't know anything about the event yet. All I know is that it's the summer event that you hopefully should be able to get this tank for free. I know it's going to take quite a bit of skill and a lot of damage, I've heard, to get the tank for free, but good news is you still are getting a free tier 7 premium tank. So in today's video, I'm going to be telling you, as I said, everything I do know about the vehicle, and then of course once the event does come out, which I've been told is Monday, once the event does come out, I'm going to be making a video detailing how to best earn the vehicle in the event. So what is good about the WZ Blaze and what is bad? So the good stuff, first of all, is the gun. This is actually my favorite thing on the tank. This carries a 122mm. It's, uh, it's kind of like the same gun you'd find on your IS-3 or T-34-3. It's, uh, it's just a 122. It's got one specific factor, though, going for it that most Russian heavies don't, or even Russian tank destroyers. And that is, well, if you look at the aiming time here, it's a 2.5 second aiming time. Now, sadly, my team did not spot that 62 because, well, they're doing one of the weirdest pushes I've ever seen. They kind of, like, wanted to go towards the base capture, and then I'm not really sure what the team's doing right now. But um, I'm going to be using this tank in a very, very good tank destroyer position, one of my favorites. So we've got that Sentinel right there. Well, sadly, there is a downside. You do have the amazing gaming time, but at the same time, you are lacking one thing, and that is the uh, the dispersion. This does not have good dispersion at that. It also doesn't have good armor, as you saw that Blaze, I mean, not the Blaze, the AC sent easily penning shells right through our tank. However, you can see that the aiming time on this tank is fantastic. The ability to just easily hit opponents like that Tiger 1 in the turret with barely aiming at them is something that most Russian tank destroyers can't really do. And I love this tank just because it's able to do that alone in it. So we've got that Tiger once again, and if that shot hits, yeah, I didn't think that would. Uh, sometimes not all the shells go where you want, but the nice thing is you do have a great camo rating, as you can see, not detected after that shot. So I'm going to be a little bit passive here. Let's see if we can get that 62 Dragon. Nice high explosive shell right in the side of that tank. Probably going to regret pulling out there next time he does do that, if he does it again at least. But you're seeing that pretty much the main thing that is excellent on this vehicle is the uh, the gun. I absolutely love the ability to just aim in so quickly on your enemy. Now, you can see once again, dispersion, yeah, that's definitely nothing to write home about. But just having that wonderful aiming time does make up for it plenty, in my personal opinion. So let's see if that Tiger wants to pull out. I'm not going to try and take that shell again, just because we've seen how it's gone before. But there we go, another beautiful shot right into the side of that Type 62 Dragon. Dragon, yes, my my English is wonderful today, but it is pretty late at night, or should I say, pretty early in the morning, because it's about 1 o'clock in the morning for me. So, there's a lot of tanks over to the side where my team's at, and that's definitely an issue, but uh, I'm pretty sure we will be able to deal with them here. Let's load an HE, and... Well, I got no clue where that shell went. I'm not sure if there was a tank there, but yeah, actually no clue where that shell ended up going when I did fire it, so that kind of sucks. But uh, we're going to see if we can maybe get another shell out here. We got the Sentinel still out. Uh, there we go. Nice shot right in the butt, lighting him on fire. That was definitely what we needed to uh, to raise our chances of winning this game. And I definitely think we can win this. It's just the factor of uh, how good is our team going to be doing here. So we've got that Gravedigger. I would love to be able to get a shot into him. Um... Uh, we're not gonna be able to get that out just yet. Sentinel, not possible to shoot, but here we go. Yes, okay, I thought that shell was gonna miss, but still getting a very nice and beefy shell into that Gravedigger. So now you're gonna see one of the other great things about this tank, and that is the mobility. You're gonna see here I'm very easily getting up to 50 kilometers per hour. It's got a great power to weight ratio. It doesn't have armor, as you saw there, but lacking armor, you do gain this excellent mobility here, which, yeah, it really is great, able to get into top speed. And sadly, our HE did not pen there. But, uh, don't always need HE for the second shell here. We're easily going to be clearing that scent, uh, as soon as we do fire. So let's finish off the Sentinel here, using our, again, wonderful aiming time to finish him off. And then, uh, yeah, this Yag Panther is not going to be doing too well in the next shot here. So let's finish off the Yag Panther as well. Nice little HE right in the front of his tank. And, well, 
you can see from the first game, it really did do an excellent job. 2,651 damage using that excellent mobility to our advantage there at the end. Using the aiming time as well, it's got very nice DPM. Now, it doesn't have spectacular damage per minute, and that's definitely a trade-off. You're gaining the turret, you're gaining the mobility, but you are losing about, I'd say, 500 damage per minute to your average Russian tank destroyer. The SU-152 uh, sitting at, like, I think 3,300 DPM. This one, I think it's sitting at around 2,500. Let's double check real quick. It is sitting at 2,200. So, yeah, you can see it's not really good on the DPM, but it's, of course, not meant to be good on the damage per minute. It has, first of all, great gun depression. I thought it was 7 degrees, but it actually has 8 degrees of gun depression over the front, which makes it extremely flexible. And this tank has been buffed majorly over the years it has been in the game. It used to be very easy to penetrate with high explosive. It's actually very hard. Unless you're running a 152 millimeter, you really can't penetrate the front of it. So how would I suggest to run this tank? So of course, it's not meant to be a frontline tank destroyer. It's got great camouflage rating. It's got that wonderful aiming time. So you're supposed to stay at the back of the map, use your aiming time, and get some very beefy shells into the enemy opponents. You saw last game, I was very easily able to get a bunch of shells with that wonderful aiming time into your enemy opponents. And uh, while it doesn't have great dispersion at .37, it's definitely not bad because, you know, if you compare this to an SU-152's gun with the 120mm, well, uh, it really doesn't make a difference because you're just gaining that aiming time where you're not really losing the dispersion. So it's kind of a trade-off. You're gaining that aiming time, but you're also losing quite a bit of DPM, but you have way more mobility than your average Russian tanks as well. So I really love the, uh, the abilities on this tank here. We are actually spotted, which means I'm going to back up very, very quickly. I don't want to play with that. Not anytime soon, at least. Um, but yeah, this could definitely be an issue for me here. That T25AT getting my teammate shot. So let's aim in and, uh, there we go. Nice penetration right on that AT. He missed his shell. And, uh, is that a Panther 8.8? Yes, it is. I'm actually very surprised to see that in this game. But hopefully my Panther will be penning one more shell. Let's aim in right on that cupola on the roof. And again, you can see that that aiming time when you are very close to your enemy opponents is excellent. Like, I was easily able to pen that shell in. Don't really care that that guy hit me because, once again, aiming in on the lower plate of that uh, that sheriff, easy shots right through. And that's why this aiming time is spectacular because in the normal SU-152, I probably still would have been aiming in there where this tank, yeah, you really don't have that issue. So let's see if we can get another nice shot out here. We got that 44-100 Hellfire. Nice revenge shell into him, not only penning him, but also making him use his uh, repair kit as we damaged his ammo rack. So you can see that the aiming time is definitely a benefit as well. You have a turret which of course makes you way more flexible so once again aiming into that lower plate although that time maybe not as lucky there you did see that once again that dispersion not really going well for us but this shot here a guaranteed kill because well yeah it's the butt of a, uh, a t2065 sheriff so we have the t29 pulling out to the side here i would love to be able to get a shell penetrating that vk100 is he gonna back up yes there we go nice shot to the vk side and now we're going to back up here before this T-29 hopefully does get a shell into us. Come on, just skirting our way down. There we go, able to bounce the shell. So let's see if we can get a little bit of a vengeance shot back into this T-29. There we go, 375 damage. Once again, going to try and back up quickly here. I just realized that I have absolutely no teammates here, which, yeah, that's not really a, uh, that's not something to be proud of. So uh, let's see if that ISU wants to play with us. There's really not much I could do now. We're probably going to die. Just want to see if that ISU is going to pull out here. There we go. Using our aiming time once again. Got the shell in. And come on, miss your shot. Miss it. No. But our team kind of just left us, which kind of sucks for me. But um, I hopefully should be coming out with the victory here. I actually like the explosion uh, thing on this tank. Now, one thing I will say is the camo, not necessarily the best for the Blaze because it is a very, very old tank. In fact, it's so old that it's marked as an unidentified nation tank. It doesn't even have the Chinese nation on it. I do suggest that Wargaming, if you're watching this video, maybe do give it the Chinese nation because we all know the WZ Blaze is a Chinese tank. Not only does it have the Chinese dragon on it as well, it's literally titled as WZ, which is pretty much all the Chinese tanks in the game. Now, sadly, it looks like our team is not going to be winning this game, but once again, with the power of editing, we're going to get straight back into my garage. 
back in the garage, you can see with over 3,000 damage dealt, it really is a solid tank, especially because we were only able to survive that match for a couple of minutes. One of the first tanks taken out, we fired nine shells, eight of them hit and eight of them penetrated. The only one missing was that shell that kind of dunked in the dirt from that T2065 Sheriff. The thing that I absolutely love about the Blaze is when you're very close to your enemy opponents, you're able to hit shots like on that T25 AT you saw there, where my SU-152, I would have still been aiming in for ages. Let's see how long the, re the aiming time is on the SU-152, you can see it's almost double at 4.2 seconds, and with almost the exact same dispersion, I actually think that the Blaze's gun is better just because of that aiming time. Like, that T25AT able to hit that cupola very easily, and it still was quite a bit of a distance away. So I do love the Blaze. I actually like that it's very mobile. It has a semi-traversable turret, an excellent gun. I do wish that they would make the camouflage a little bit more HD, but overall, I think the Blaze is a great tank, and I'm very excited for the event to come out, although, sadly, I I already have the tank in my garage, so uh, I guess it's just going to be adding to my 95 million credits already in my account. So hopefully you guys are excited as I am, and good luck getting the tank out there in the event. If it does come out tomorrow, of course I'll be making a video, as I said, on telling you guys about the event, but make sure to slap that subscribe button down below if you did enjoy this content, and I'll see you in the next one.